In this video, we're finally putting the cap on one long overdue corset. In case you missed the preamble to this video, a small video about the mock-up for this corset was posted in June. To start the finalized process, I began tracing out the pieces with the adjusted pattern from the last video. This was traced onto two layers of interior fabric made of a cotton drill plus a pink cotton fashion layer for the outside. This outer layer would later become extraordinarily problematic, but more on that later. Altogether, there were 36 pieces cut out, which took approximately forever. Alright guys, so I finally got in the stuff I need to move forward with the corset. I've got my busk. I ended up going with a 13 inch just because I was worried the 14 inch was going to be too long. Uh, four flat steels for the back and a uh, corset maker's all. Uh, this is for poking holes for the busk and for the grommets in the back. Uh, I'm hoping that my friend will let me just borrow her uh, grommet maker and I won't have to invest in one of those. Uh, but for now, we can move forward with this either way. Uh, now I just have to flatline my fashion fabric to the drill under layer and get cracking. This corset is made with a welt double layer method, which can be a bit bulky if you're trying to stealth your corset. But since this is going to be worn under many layers, I didn't think it would be much of a problem. It was the method recommended in the instructions as well, and since this was my first corset, I didn't want to deviate too heavily. I flatlined all of my fashion fabric pieces to their corresponding strength pieces, taking care not to accidentally make duplicate sides. This is where the fashion fabric first started causing problems. In my great hubris, I picked a fabric without thoroughly inspecting it at Joann's, and it turned out to be a two-way stretch fabric instead of a no-stretch fabric. Structurally, this isn't a huge deal since it's reinforced with an exceptionally non-stretch fabric. However, as it was sewed, it pulled and twisted a bit, leading to a slightly messier finish than I frankly would have cared for. To help the fabric shrink back and lay as evenly as possible, I ironed the ever-loving hell out of it before moving on to the next step, which happened to be the insertion of the front bust closure. This process was relatively simple. For the eye side, you mark where the eyes are going to poke out and sew down that side, leaving gaps in the stitches for them. Looking back, I probably could have gone with a 13.5 inch busk instead of a 13 inch, but I think it sat alright anyways. I wasn't able to get video of the other side simply because it was so unexpectedly finicky, but the premise was that you should mark out where your little knobs would sit against the other side and use your awl to poke through the fabric to allow them to come to the surface. This process had to be repeated a few times as my holes kept maddeningly closing themselves up as I went. After this, I went through and sewed everything up. I had some issues here as I forgot to clip a lot of the seams before moving on to the next seam, which is an issue as they enclose each other as they go on. I tried sticking my scissors in at the top and clip what I could after I'd finished, but that was obviously an unrecommended last resort. Nothing to do about it once it's done though, and it didn't seem to stress the fabric too much in the end. To secure everything, I stitched down through both layers of fabric and the seam allowances right next to the seam line, and then stitched again a little ways away to create the channels for the bones. You can see a lot of odd puckers in the fabric, and that is once again because the pesky fashion fabric I had chose. This puckering is due to the sewing machine foot pulling the fabric as it was stitched down the boning channels. Had I thought about it ahead of time, I imagine a walking foot could have alleviated some of the pulling, but I think it's okay anyways. At this point, I added bias tape and lace to the top half to close it up for bone insertion. The bias tape was machine sewn along the front and hand stitched along the back for cleanliness before it was bone time. This is more or less where everything went off the rails. I was using a heavy-duty synthetic baleen, a specialty type of plastic meant to mimic whale boning used historically. To start out, I cut my pieces to size and sanded the edges smooth. Then I ironed my pieces gently to smooth out some of the curve.
Once we began inserting the bones, though, things quickly became more difficult. The channels stitched near the seam were almost impossible to get bones into. Perhaps it was because the stitched down seam allowance hadn't been secured properly, or maybe the fabric was too thick to also fit the bone in, but it took my boyfriend and I almost an hour to get all the pieces in and a lot of maneuvering. The ones sewn just through the fabric and not near the seams, however, had absolutely no problem going in. Of course. Do you want to try and like pull it out a little bit and see if you can get momentum? Oh, if you can even get it out now. And here's the final product. Off video, I ended up sewing hand done eyelets into the back for maximum structural integrity using some floss and added the bottom bias tape. All that's left to do is try it on. Overall, I'm really happy with this project. It was not easy and it was very intimidating, but I'm happy with how it turned out even with its flaws and I feel a lot more confident going into future corset projects.